Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory, where one time I gave you 20 tips you might not know, and now I'm gonna try and give you another 20 tips that you might not know, so that's like 40 tips and all I ask for is one like. Is that a deal? Excellent! Let's get started. Tip number one, whenever you're building a hyper tube or a pipe, when you get to the end of the pipe you can use a scroll wheel to make it go up and down and moving all around. Especially dang handy when you're about to go up a street wall with one of the pipes because then you can just do with this and that, and then you're good to go. Or you can just get satisfaction out of the dancing pipes, you know, to each their own. Have fun. And tip number two has to do with hypertubes as well. Say you start going down a hypertube where you don't like where it leads, you can actually turn around. Wow. The technology. Then you get the added bonus of becoming an egg person. And tip number three is really handy if you're actually moving from beast to beast. But whenever you delete a bin and you don't have room in your inventory, it makes a little box, right? Like that little dude. And it sits there with all the stuff that was in the bin. However, you can abuse this mechanic by using the mass dismantle tool. So all these bins are super full of stuff. But say you go anywhere else on the map and there's another bin, like this personal storage box here, and mass dismantle that too, that'll be the closest inventory next to you. So... Everything appears in the box right next to you here. So potentially you could just transport items literally across the entire world instantly to wherever you want. Tip and or random fact number four. You can only collect a certain amount of Sam ore per game session, usually about 50-ish. And then the machine just stops. So to get more Sam ore, you have to go back to the menu and reload your game. Why this is? I don't know. It's only for Sam ore. It's a mystery. Oh, wow, so spooky. Leave your theories about it in the comments below. And tip number five. People always argue about what method of transport is the best in the game, but it's not belts, it's not the trains, tractors, trucks, none of it. The factory cart is actually number one. Oh, or golf cart, apparently that hasn't been changed yet. But yes, this is the best because it doesn't require any fuel and has an inventory. So for the small price of a couple reinforced plates, rods, and rotors, you can transport items across any distance for no cost. All right, and look, I do understand that means you're gonna have to set up like 30,000 factory carts to transport items, but look, I've done the math for you min-maxers out there. It's very clear that this is the most efficient way to go about things. So look, you can't argue with the math. It just works out too well. Conversation over. Tip number six, if you put enough hyper tubes in a row and then enter them, you can see God. So you know, that's cool. Tip number seven is that whenever you use power shards in any machine to increase its clock speed, it uses exponentially more power than if you just have more machines. So one machine here takes four megawatts. This machine on 2.5% clock speed uses 17.3 megawatts. So power shards allow you to save space at the cost of power. Shards. And actual power. Both those things. Another fun fact is that you can ride the moth that's hanging out in the grid. Oh, no! Another fun fact is you can actually ride the giant moth that is running around the Green Hills biome and the Northern Forest. So it's kind of like an airplane of sorts, which is pretty neat. However, the moth is also immortal! So you won't be shooing this bad boy away anytime soon. And with that in mind, remember tip number 10, and that is that the moth does not care about physics or your factory. It does not abide by the rules of us mere mortals. So like seriously, if you're building a tall factory, watch out for this bad boy. Does it scoot right on through, brother? Tip 11, there's a rock in the red desert that looks like something familiar. Can't really put my finger on it. Oh, I guess a mushroom, yeah. Tip number 12, you can turn off the in-game fog by holding Control, Shift, and L, and then pressing the tilde key to bring up the command console, and then typing r.fog space zero. And that turns off all the fog in the game, so you can see through all the places you couldn't see before. Although the fog does sometimes look better, so you can turn that back on by doing r.fog one. And that turns the fog back on. Or you can re-log into your save file. 
and the fog arena is on by default arena. And speaking of looks, you can press the P button to enter photo mode. And you can scroll in and out to get a wider angle of things. In case, you know, you see something that looks a little pretty. Or if you want that beautiful picture of your moments before death. And tip number 14 is very important, but it is to remind you guys that trains do still in fact go chew. Also, fun fact number 15, there's an emote wheel. So you hold like, oh, that's my control, and you have like a clap emote. Or you have a twirl emote. And if you use them enough times, sometimes you can even get a secret emote. And thankfully, I clap a lot on my Twitch live streams. So here's the example of the clapping one. Clapping for all time, all eternity. Oh! Oh! It finally happened! And also on Twitch, I found out that trucks are actually very aerodynamic! <laughs> Thanks for something. <laughs> what the f? <laughs> okay, and this next tip is gonna be quite controversial. Because there is a way that you can get rid of nuclear waste permanently. However, you have to sell your soul to do it. But first, you're gonna have to tame yourself a lizard doggo. And since Mr. Flips and Flops has himself an inventory slot, you can grab your nuclear waste and put it in his inventory slot. And then leave him. Leave him forever. Or do even darker things. But I do not condone of it! Just leave them alone. When you die and respawn, they'll forget you anyway. But on a lighter note, the train station names that come default with the train stations you build are based on train stations in real life. In fact, I've even been to this one. But then after like 200 stations or so, the game just kind of gives up and calls it Train Simulator at that point. Because it really is! I mean, though, those are the 20 tips and random things I had for you today, so maybe you knew stuff, maybe you didn't. If you didn't, let me know. If you did, let me know. I don't know. Let me know. All I know is the video's over, so remember to leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed, check out my Twitch channel too. Wow! And have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.